Wilson Miles from Black Women TV. Hello, folks. How's it going? Hey, how are hey, you? Very well. Nice. Now, you guys have known for a while that season two was happening. So, having said that, and how long did it take for each of you to feel comfortable in the characters you're playing, physically wise, physical wise, and just knowing that you know you'd have more seasons to come? Because sometimes with the first season, you, you never know, but. You knew early on that you'd have at least two seasons in job security. Yeah, <laughs> Sam. Oh, Sam. Yeah, no. I think um, when we auditioned, uh, there was very uh, intuitive knowing that this kind of felt right for for us. I, I, I feel I know when me and uh, Frida sat down opposite each other for the chemistry read, we just looked at each other and there was just like a an absolute clarity and an absolute knowing that uh, you know. We were meant to honor these spirits that were meant to be expressed on this screen and um i think uh with the four month postponement of the first season it allowed a lot of time to marinate in those characters and when we arrived on the first day we were ready to go mm. yeah absolutely. yeah yeah i can only you know agree to what sam says and the, the interesting thing is we uh had to film the last block of season one uh, last year, so we went in from shooting all of those really, really intense scenes of the end of the first season, and then we had the weekend, and then on the Monday we started season two. So it wasn't really like we went back home for a couple of months and we're like, okay, season two is coming. It was literally on the Friday night. We were yeah. galloping away into the sunset. We get the script, and we're like, okay, I guess tomorrow season is like yeah. break it up. <laughs> so it was yeah. uh, a quick turnaround. Jumping and yeah. like throwing ourselves into season two, which really helped, I think, because we start off so immediately after where yeah. season one ends. So that was kind I'd of say as well, whatever comfort we had reached for season one and knowing our characters and what they were about and the relationships that were important to them, one of the things that happens really early in season two is these characters are, are exiles, they're fugitives, and suddenly they're blasted out of their comfort zone. And so and that's quite fun as an actor suddenly you're, you're having to find it all again in a sense because your characters have, have lost loads of things, be it personal or political. Um, so yeah, Jeb, Jeb kept us on our toes. So, from what we see early on, you guys are joined at the head. Having said that, uh, how's the training going along? Physical training, you know, did you guys do it together? Did you guys do it separate? When you're doing fighting skills or anything else? I think we did so, it yeah. pretty separately. Yeah, well, the good thing, okay. the good thing and you know the the thing this season is that we we do part ways more or less so when you guys would be super busy filming your stuff i would have days off of set where i could be in the stunt shed rehearsing my all my various new fights for season two and and the other way around so in that capacity we were always kind of like you know switching out who would be on set and who would have time to work on their respective fights. But it was always really cool to come into the stunt when we wouldn't have scenes together and see yeah. what amazing things yeah. that you guys were working on, especially the bullpen fight, which was... I remember see, you seeing your rehearsal going, oh my god, you're gonna, you're gonna die. I, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. gonna die. <laughs> no, you're gonna die. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and we actually... We, we don't fight each other because we're buddies. So, so yeah, we... we we didn't have too much stunt training together. You you do come and save my save my ass in a boxing match, but yes. by that point I'm I'm out for the count. I'm on the canvas. So yeah, I just watch watch you come in and destroy people. Now each of you have done different projects, but with this particular show, there's so much going on. What have you worked on skill set wise that has helped you out as actors, Sam? Mm. Uh, I'd say a sense of balance. To be honest, like. Uh, Often, I suppose when we started in season one, we sunk right in and we almost had no option but to sink right in because of, of, our, of the pandemic circumstances and everything. Like We were kind of living and breathing biking world and come season two, there was a little bit of a crack opening in the world and we were able to uh, live a little bit more. And I think that balance uh, was something that I, I found during an eight month shoot was extremely necessary. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Anyone else? Frida? Yeah, I think, I mean, just to work on a show of this scope and the scale, but also we, the, the pace we work, I mean, you've seen the show, we, it's, it's big days almost every single day. I mean, we don't have these lovely kind of sitting around chilling scenes. It's like every day you come in and it's like you're either going to fight for your life, you're going to see a loved one die. It's mm. to be able to always have big emotions there and ready to go that was something that i'm going to really take from this job and uh and use in, in the future the the simple 
pace of it all. Yeah. It's it's astounding. I've done um, I've never done so much action before. I've done period dramas and like waltzes around a ballroom, uh, which don't compare at all to a, a boxing match and a wrestling match. Um, so yeah, definitely those physical skills. I've really enjoyed being taught by the stunt guys and and training with Pat Henry and stuff. So yeah, adding that to to the job is is has been really rewarding. I've had fun. Each of your job well done. It's good talking to you guys. Let's hope we get a season three. Cheerio. Thank you very Thanks. much. Bye. Man. Wilson Morales from Black from TV. Hey, Jeb, how's it going? Hey, Wilson, I'm good. How about you? Good. You know, for a while that obviously you're going to have a season two. So how comfortable does it make it for the screenwriters in terms of pacing out the storyline? I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't hear the first part of the question. Knowing that you're coming back for season two, early on how comfortable does it make it for the screenwriters and pacing out the storyline you know it it uh it, it's a it's a real luxury you know it, it it's it's a luxury to know that you've got that and even if we didn't have that luxury you would take the gamble anyway in other words you you know you we're we're tracking certain aspects of history here so i kind of have a feeling i know where harold's story is going to go i know what life is going to get to the new world at some point i know that freitas is going to have all these battles that, that are going to be part of her story. So, um, but when you can talk to the actors while you're shooting season one and you say, here's where we're going to go in season two, that's a luxury. That's really wonderful. Now, when you're trying to flush out new characters in the storyline, some actual and some fictional, you know, uh, does it present a challenge? Uh, no, um, I mean, it's always challenging. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not being flippant when I say no, it's not. It, it's, it, it's just that I, I see it as, a, as, a, as one of the great pluses of writing this story. You know, the fact that our, our Vikings, in, in, and one of the reasons why we chose this time period was that this was a time period where our Viking explorers get out of Scandinavia. And when getting out of Scandinavia, now suddenly you're dealing with, you know, you, you know, uh, kingdoms like Novgorod or, you know, getting down to Constantinople. Come imagine, you know, you're, you, you're getting down to Constantinople. Constantinople had a million people in it. I mean, you know, to put it in perspective, then the next largest city anywhere in Western Europe at the time was like, I think, Cologne, and it had 50,000, 50,000, a million. I mean, London at the time had, what, 25,000, a million people. Can you imagine the mind blowing this? And the, 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 those people don't look all the same. I mean, you know, it's it's the hub of the universe right there. So when you're on a journey to that place, you're going to see faces and cultures and beliefs that you were never exposed to. And that's that's the fun for writing these characters is it is that that comes to the story, you know, organically. You know, it's not me just saying, hey. I need a black face here. I need a Muslim face here. I need, why don't we make this, this? It, it, it's just, it, 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 I know that those guys are going to be running into these, these characters along the way because that's the way the world was at that time. There are lies having to have an historical consultant and a script supervisor so that everything's in place because obviously minds are watching us to make sure that everything is connected, dots and T's, and you're not off by a century or, or by a, you know, or whatever else is in place, whether it be the costumes, the locations, or the people. You know, right. so how, how often are you working with them to make sure, I'm sure, this, you know, the screenwriters write their place and storylines, and then you have to bring in a team to make sure everything else is right in terms of the production design. It, it, we work, we look at work a little more integral than that. In other words, it's not just saying, hmm, why don't we do this and let's go that. You know, we start with, we start every, every season uh, with sort of an overall concept. I'll come up with an overall concept. Here's where I want to start. Here's the, here are the themes that we want to attack. Here's what we want to, you know, exploit along the way. And here's where we want to end up. And then as we bring in the writers, we don't just bring the writers in and, and, and expect them to just sort of know by osmosis what a Viking show is like. I mean, they, they, you know, I don't care if you've read a lot, you, 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 you haven't, you just don't know the specificity that you know that someone like me who's who's read 10 times more than they have and has created stuff knows as well as our researchers and our historians and all of our other specialty people so we bring them in and our writers rooms are are long 
and they're very detailed and the actors come in and the stunt people come in and the production design comes in. And, you know, after a while, the writers are almost like, holy cow, I can't write at all. I mean, it's like I've got too much stuff, but that all percolates. And, 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 and it becomes part of the fabric of the show. So writers don't just write something and hope it works, you know, in, historically. They work in sort of a combination with the historical aspects of it. Yeah, we're not telling a documentary. We will move certain pieces around, but we are pretty accurate with the storytelling. And we're pretty, pretty damn proud of the authenticity of the look. You know, before I let you go, was there anything you learned from the first season, whether be criticism or anything else that you uh you could that you took into season two um that's a really good question i mean a million things i mean obviously a million things we, we, very ambitious season one as you know it was you know to try to get feature quality action pieces and stunts and things like that into a television season that's just running like this in the middle of covid you know, and huge battle scenes, you know, it, 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 it's a challenge. I would say um, if, if, if I learned anything, it was plan a little bit more. Uh, to, to be able to do that is all about planning. It's all about thinking. It's all about cooperation. It's all about pushing your crew and your cast and, and, and being communicating, talking with people a lot more. So, I don't know if I succeeded in that, but I, I tell you, every year we try to top the year before, and that's our goal. You know, that's our goal in terms of action, in terms of character interaction, in terms of the quality of things. So um, uh, I'm still learning, man. I, you know, I just you keep pushing the envelope, but uh, we're happy with it. We're really, really happy. I hope people love it. Hopefully so. We'll get a season three. Congrats, Jeb, and we'll talk down the road. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks a million. Take care.